and welcome back to this second EQ Match tutorial, which will look at some more adventurous applications. I'll start with a white noise source. I'm using Twin 2 in this case, and I've looped a MIDI note for the duration of the song to keep it running. And then I'll add a noise gate with the side chain fed from the snare drum, so the gate opens for every snare hit. Mixing this in with the drum mics can help to add a livelier character to the snare. But I don't need to add very much before it starts to sound unnatural. Actually, I can improve this a lot simply by taming the highest octave of the noise with a low pass filter. But I'm going to try a more sophisticated approach using the match EQ function in Pro Q2. This instance is running on the noise channel but I've once again routed the snare mics to the side chain, so I can use this signal as a reference. Before I actually apply the match EQ, I'm gonna make sure the auto gain setting is turned on to avoid any nasty shocks from sudden volume jumps. And this is probably a good idea whenever you're experimenting with more creative EQ matching applications. So the result blends a lot better with the drum mics, so I can get away with using more of it. And this gives me some interesting snare shaping options. I could lengthen the release time for the gate to add a longer tail, for example. Or I could dial it right back and just add a sharp, snappy attack. I can also tweak the EQ settings. Adding a tilt filter somewhere in the mid-range gives me an easy way to make the noise brighter or darker. And of course, I can add further processing, like this transient enhancing Saturn setup. I'm going to finish off this example by duplicating the gate to create a second instance on the same track, again driven by the snare feeding the sidechain. But this time I'm going to set a ratio of 2 to 1 to create a gentler downward expansion setting and increase the threshold so that only the very loudest hits approach it. And this forces the noise track to follow the dynamics of the snare drum and avoid overemphasizing quieter ghost notes. Okay, this time I've loaded an EQ on one of the guitar channels, which I've called Guitar 1 and I've routed Guitar 2 to the side chain. I've looped a section of the song with both guitars playing chords for the purposes of this exercise. When I apply this, we get a complex EQ curve attempting to move Guitar 1 closer to Guitar 2 in tone, which is actually kind of the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to grab all EQ bands and invert the gains so that cuts become boosts, and boosts become cuts. And I'm going to be pretty subtle. Let's switch the display scale so we can see the resulting curve more clearly. We now have an EQ setting which is gently and transparently helping to separate Guitar 1 from Guitar 2 in the mix. So why not do the same in reverse for Guitar 2? Well, I could repeat the process, but running the same analysis with the two signals swapped around is theoretically just going to give an equal and opposite result. So it's quicker to copy my Guitar 1 EQ to the Guitar 2 channel and invert all the gains once more. Again, being pretty subtle. If I toggle bypass for both instances, you can hopefully hear how much extra separation and clarity this creates within the mix. So let's try taking this concept further. This time I have an instance of Pro Q2 running on the drums subgroup with a reference spectrum that I saved from another subgroup consisting of bass guitar, keys, and both electric guitars. The white corrective curve is pretty extreme in this case, as you would expect when matching such drastically different signals. And I'm definitely gonna make sure auto gain is enabled before I hit match on this one.
as you might expect, the result sounds pretty awful when I apply it. But of course, I'm once again going to grab all the bands and invert the gains to carve out space in the drums where the guitars and keys are most prominent. I might make a couple of tweaks, however. I'm going to clean up the boosts at the low and high extremes and restrict my shaping to the critical mid-range region. Of course, any major changes to the underlying drum or guitar mixes is likely to throw this off. So probably better to save this trick to the final stages of the mix. Okay, that's all for now. Hopefully you'll find some of these tricks useful. Or be inspired to use a little lateral thinking and come up with your own unusual EQ match applications. Thanks for watching. Can't pass the day zone. Won't pass the day zone. Never pass the day zone. Can't pass the day zone, won't pass the day zone, never pass the day zone.